Hi everyone, Steve Crosby here. Welcome to this edition of Monday Morning Musing. Several weeks ago, I made mention that we were going to be doing a little series on something called Father-Son Ministry. Now, some of you have never even heard of that, and in many ways, you've probably been protected from a lot of bad stuff. Others of you have experienced it and have suffered, and some of you have experienced and maybe had a good experience. For those of you who think, I don't even know what this guy's talking about. I want to let you know something. As recently as three weeks ago, I saw a promotion for a, a conference, and it was a father-son ministry conference. And what it was is 50-year-old, uh, 6-year-old, 70-year-old guys, mostly, who were the, the featured speakers. And each one of them was bringing what we might call a protege, but it was called the son. And it was actually the way that the conference was promoted. Here's the father and here's the son. And the, the premise of this father-son ministry is that supposedly, because God is all about family, it goes like this. Here's, here's where the teaching comes from. God himself is a, is, a, is, a, is a corporate entity, is a father and a son. So the universe reflects the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit corporateness. And, you know, God spoke generation. He spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jake, Jacob. So when God self-identifies, he identifies corporately through a father and a son. And then you go to typology, you know, Elijah had Elisha. And Paul had Timothy. And so, one of the problems, now this is their argument. I'm making a very short case for their argument. One of the problems with traditional Christianity is that there's professional clergy and there's no father-son relationship. You know, you're just, they're, they're uh, wolves among sheep and they're just paid laborers. And what we really need to uh, recover a pure form of biblical Christianity is the father-son model of ministry. And it also goes like this. There are attendant features to it, and some are very dark, some only a little bit dark, and some not so bad. And it goes like this. Well, and some of you probably heard things like this. Well, you know, until you serve another man's vision, you know, you'll never get your own ministry. So, you know, you need to learn to serve. And so part of the dynamic is if you're a son to this father figure, it means, you know, you babysit his children for free, you mow his lawn for free, you uh, change his oil for free, you basically become his servant, because just like Elijah had Elisha, and Gehazi uh, served uh, Elisha, or it, it, it becomes this pattern of obligation. So that's like one thing you have to do. And the premise is, until you've served another man's ministry, you will never get your own. And they'll use language like this. We won't bless you or we won't release you to your own ministry. We won't, we won't endorse you until you fulfill the uh, undefined amount of time serving another man's ministry. Another form of this doctrine is a spinoff of the doctrine of spiritual covering. Your spiritual father covers you in some sort of a mystical protection. Unless, and, and if you don't have a spiritual father, you're out from under covering. Uh, the, uh, another aspect of this doctrine is, you know, that you must tithe to your spiritual father. I've heard it taught this way, that you must tithe upstream. That, for instance, if you're, a, you're in, in, in ministry, professional ministry, if you give your tithe check to the church, it doesn't count because you're sowing your seed to yourself. You have to sow your seed upstream. I don't think it takes very much insight to see how that just develops into a pyramid scheme because what the these guys do, and I've been in these meetings where these guys my age and older will actually recruit people. You know, I'm a spiritual father and, you know, I'm looking for spiritual sons. Well, yeah, because you're at the head of, of a pyramid scheme where everybody's given money upstream and then supposedly the spiritual father ties to his spiritual father. It's, it's, a, it's a pyramid scheme. So those are just some of the, the downsides of this. But fundamental to any topic, if there's, if there's so much darkness on something or if there's so much aberration, there has to be something that it is a distortion of. Otherwise, what is the legitimate expression of this distortion?
So in this series that we're going to be doing for several weeks, we're going to be unpacking this topic. And, and, it, and it boils down to this. What is the legitimate expression? Or is there such a thing? Is there a legitimate expression? What does it look like when it's healthy, if there is such a thing? And how do we avoid some of these other controlling, harmful aberrations? So if you've experienced this, or if you know someone who's in an apostolic so-called network, or if you uh, have someone who's got questions about this, I'm really hoping that these next few weeks are going to be very helpful to you. So this is just an introduction. We'll get into it a little bit more the next time we're together. See you then.